Good happy Sunday morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First up, Air Force to spend $30 million on water cleanup at Pease. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Tim Callery. This is Axe Body Spray. Use it to stay fresh all day. And this is Axe Dry Spray. Use it to stay dry for 48 hours. Why are you touching your armpit? I was just checking to see if it was dry. This is the area known as Site 8, where the Air Force discovered contaminated groundwater consisting of perfluorinated compounds. The site was used as a fire training area between 1970 and 1988. State officials say most of the contamination came from foams used to fight fires. The foam is now causing a lot of problems. It's running down into the Haven Well. That's what caused the closure of the, the Haven Well. It's also running off because you can see we're standing on a hill here. So it's running off into Newington. It's kind of going off in a whole bunch of di different directions. Since 2014, the Air Force has spent $25 million on their initial response and investigation into the contamination. They also plan to spend another $30 million this this year for the construction of a groundwater treatment system to mitigate contamination impacts on the Haven drinking water well. Still, concerns remain for local lawmakers like state rep Mindy Mesmer. We don't know, really know what was in the foams that they used to fight the fires exactly. Mesmer says the state is aware of three foams that were used at the site. Two of them were regulated and now the state is pushing for more information on the base's history to find out what other compounds may be in the water. The state is making a formal request to the Air Force to identify what products they've used at their training site in the past. We're concerned about whether or not the system's working effectively and if, we're, if the water's really safe coming out of it. And now part of the state's formal request to the Air Force is to identify people who worked on the Air Force base between 1977 and 1990 and notify them of the contamination issues. Live here in Newington, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Common Ave Bridge Demolish gets off to noisy start. Let's take a listen to this video from WCVB, David Benick in Boston. It means much more than providing you with a place to bank. We offer a wide range of products with some of the most competitive rates of any bank on the North Shore. Call or visit us online at institutionforsavings.com. A half dozen excavators armed with jackhammers have started chewing away at the old Comav Bridge. I said, this looks like war. What's going on? Bernardo Perez, who lives a couple blocks away, is now navigating roadblocks and trying to sleep at night through the round-the-clock racket caused by this and other nearby construction projects. My son has his bedroom close to uh, the Commonwealth Avenue and it's very noisy, so yeah, that's the main thing, you know. Drivers on the pike, which passes under the bridge, are starting to feel the squeeze. Highway traffic is cut from the regular eight lanes to three, with two headed out of Boston and one headed in. Starting Monday morning, that will return to a two and two configuration. Not great, but a little bit more uh, a little bit more capacity for commuters. Shuttle buses have replaced Green Line T service over the bridge. Signs remind customers ComEv businesses are still open. But this pizza shop says the detours make it harder for customers to get in and for delivery drivers to get out. Well, hopefully we're not going to be impacted too much, but the delivery times are going to be longer and customers won't be happy when the pizzas are taking longer to get there. Down the street, the pumps at this gas station sit idle and the service bay is empty. The owner estimates he's losing 90% of his business during the project and thinks the state should make up the difference. Not me, only businesses around here. Like Star Market, 7-Eleven, uh, Chipotle, all these people should be compensated somehow. We asked, but so far, no word on whether or not the state plans to pay up for that request. Meanwhile, if you can't get enough of a project like this, it's going to last two more.
four weeks this summer and then start up again at the same time next year. I'm in Boston, even beating WCBB New Center Five. Okay, and there you go on that report. Sounds like a hectic area over there. Try to avoid that area if you can. Wells Harbor Fest kicked off yesterday. Let's take a listen to this video from WMTW News 8. Lauren Bradley. Along with a shed. Shed happens as Maine's leading manufacturer and retailer of the highest quality custom wood and vinyl storage sheds. No more snow blowers, lawn mowers, and tools taking up space in your garage or cluttering your yard. Store it all in a shed. Buy with ease with our rent to own financing. Visit shedhappens.com for ideas and information. Or visit us in person. Shed Happens, Warren Avenue in Portland and Portland Road in Saco. Wells Harbor Fest kicking off today. The whole family testing their limits at games and activities like obstacle courses and a competitive eating contest. But the big event, the Lobster Trap Toss World Championships. Competitors using all their strength to throw those traps. A whole lot to do out there with a little something for everyone. We got to see some pirates. There's some cheerleading demonstrations. Um, the fire department's here with some water fun for the kids, so it's been a lot of fun. What I thought was really fun is the pirates, and um, we saw a balloon man. How it could make balloons to all kinds of shapes. Harbor Fest is sponsored by the Wells Rotary Club. Okay, and there you go on that report. Very cool indeed. Looks like a fun event. Some of some Trump ideas aides push to move Attorney General Sessions to Homeland Security. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. We are going to begin uh, this morning with the White House shakeup. President Trump's chief of staff, Reince Priebus, resigns and is replaced by Homeland Security Secretary John Kelly, a four-star general. It has been six months of chaos in the West Wing. Not just Priebus, before that, Press Secretary Sean Spicer, gone. Communications Director, gone. The Deputy Chief of Staff, gone. The National Security Advisor, gone. Well, we're not done. The FBI Director, James Comey, also gone. All of this has happened in just six months. And now the president is turning to a trusted former general to impose order in his White House. The big question, though, can this change effectively reset the administration? And what is Reince Priebus saying about all of this? ABC's David Wright begins our coverage at the White House for us this morning. David, good morning to you. Good morning, Paula and John. The president is clearly hoping that this shakeup is going to bring some order and discipline to a White House that has been riven by by division and backbiting chaos that comes at a cost to the president's agenda. The scapegoat this week, outgoing Chief of Staff Reince Priebus, who left the White House last night. Priebus told Fox News he wouldn't comment on those scathing attacks from Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci. I'm not going to get into the, that, that subject. It's just it's getting in the mud, and I, I think the palace intrigue stuff is annoying, and, and I think it's a distraction. It takes away from the president's agenda. Um, I think what everyone needs to do is just focus on the president, to focus on the things that he wants to get done for the American people. The announcement, expected all week, came abruptly in a presidential tweet late Friday. The Priebus said he resigned Thursday. I think actually going a different direction, hitting a reset button is a good thing. And the president did that. And so I think he's happy. I, I got to tell you, although it's always a little mixed when things like this happen, 
I generally feel pretty good. Writes Priebus, a good man. Priebus's replacement starts Monday. A retired four-star general from the Marine Corps, who in his current role as Secretary of Homeland Security, was a steadfast supporter of the president's plan to strengthen America's borders. The uh, president, as we all know, has issued three executive orders related to our Homeland Security mission. These orders will secure our borders, enhance the enforcement of our immigration laws, and keep our citizens safe. General Kelly has been a star, done an incredible job thus far, respected by everybody. General John Kelly is well-liked in the West Wing with a proven record at command. His new unit badly in need of some discipline. But Kelly has no prior political experience, which could make it tough when it comes to issues like health care. The White House is still reeling over the Senate's failure to pass an Obamacare repeal, a signature campaign promise defeated with a thumbs down from Senator John McCain, a crushing blow to the GOP leadership. Well, the new chief of staff, as we said, starts Monday. In the meantime, the number two over at Homeland Security, Elaine Duke, she'll take over as acting secretary. But there's been some talk of the possibility of Attorney General Jeff Sessions eventually heading over to Homeland Security. That would uh, be news to the Department of Justice, however, and it would certainly raise some eyebrows here in Washington. That, Paula? Would, that would definitely be um, intriguing. David, before we let you go, I've got to ask you about the president. He uh, raised some eyebrows with this comment during the speech yesterday to law enforcement. He was referencing cracking down on suspected gang members. Let's take a listen. Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you're protecting their head, you know, the way you put their hand over. Like, don't hit their head and they've just killed somebody, don't hit their head. I said, you can take the hand away, okay? Okay, so David, the president, uh, taking a lot of heat for that comment. Can you give us a little context? Well, he was speaking to local law enforcement officers, and he seemed to be suggesting that a little police brutality is not necessarily a bad thing, joking that at least. And there was immediate pushback from the Suffolk County Police Department, for one. They are among the groups that he was addressing, and they tweeted out immediately that, uh, as a department, we do not tolerate the roughing up of prisoners. Paula, John? Yeah, yeah, regardless of whether or not they're gang members. All right, David Wright, thanks for your reporting from the White House. And speaking of the White House, John. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Also, some senior White House aides are encouraging President Trump to move embattled Attorney General Jeff Sessions from his post as Attorney General to the now vacant leadership spot at Department of Homeland Security, ABC News has learned. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Sunday, and I'll see you back here later on today. Bye, everyone.